Good evening, good evening, good evening. That all the people of God said, Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Good evening, good evening to all our friends and to all our family tuning in from all over the country and all over the world. We said, To God be the glory for the things that he has done. Amen. Evangelist Canada is watching with us as always, and thank you. Thank you for the music. Amen. Katrina, how are you this evening? Good evening. Good evening. Kelly D out of Chicago. Doretha. Amen. To God be the glory. How has he blessed you? Christians tune in with us. To all our friends and to all our family, we said thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir, for tuning in with us. Chief Ditchman, how are you and Claire Dunn? Kena Turner, God bless you. Amen. Teacher down there, Tunica Elementary from Scott Chapter. Evelyn William from the St. Louis. Everything's all right in the new, in the loo. Ruben Thaddeus, Mitt Thaddeus, how you doing? Thank you for watching with us this evening. Caitlin K.K. Bryan is with us the amen. Glory to God for the thing that he has done. All right, let us get some music going while, while others are, are, are log on and joining the uh, program tonight. All right, who's on the Lord's side? Amen. Who's on the Lord's side? All right. Who's on the Lord's side? Amen. Are you on the Lord's side? Kim, cop of the power. How you doing, Sister Kim? God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. How's Caitlin, my girl Caitlin, doing? All right, Byron Cage and Dorinda Clark Cole. Who's on the Lord's side? Are you on the Lord's side? All right. Oh, yeah. I'm on the Lord's side. Are you on the Lord's side? Grace Stephen Knoxville. How you doing, Sister Grace? Amen. God bless you there. You know what, Bobby? I love this part. See? Stephanie C.M. Coleman. God bless you. Grace, we're praying for our old school. Off the knees and running into some little trouble here the past few days. So let's continue to lift him up in prayer. To run the clock, Cole and Byron Cage. Who's on the Lord's side? All right, let's pray for Sister Canada. She's not 100%, but still thankful. Amen. You got prayer requests? Go ahead, type them into the comment box. Are you on the Lord's side? Really on the Lord's side. All right, go ahead on. Who's on the Lord's side? Welcome to our Wednesday night service. Amen. Byron Cage, you're in the clock cold. Makes you feel like getting up. The on Lord's side, makes you want to get up and run around the house. Amen, we bless your name if you're on the Lord's side. All right, any prayer requests, go ahead and type them in the comment box. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Share this message, please, with your friend, with your family, and with your network. Praying for Clyde Williams, our cousin now. Amen. What's going on with Clyde? So the people, let us go. All right. Get, 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 get on up if you're on the Lord's side. You're on the Lord's side. Get up. Gotta, 
Okay, don't go ahead and type your prayer request in the uh, comment box there. Amen. We'll go ahead and list these names, and then we'll come back there. Amen. Pastor MacArthur Adam, uh, Pastor Clarence Nelson, J.C. Buford, Pastor J.C. Smith, Leonard Conway, Lavinia uh, uh, Mama. Let me back that up, back that up. All right. Marie Davis, we're praying for her. Lavinia Mammon, uh, Deacon Adabon, Deacon Bob Bond, Paul Miller, Marvin Harris, class of 73, Adam, Mother Adam A. Calhoun Jenkins, Brother Clyde Jenkins, Mother Dollari, Lori Hubbard, Cat Smith, Clara Dishman, all right, Mother uh, Eunice Thomas, Marjorie Hibbler, Brother Lamar, Mo, uh, Lamar Johnson, a.k.a. Picker, praying for your brother out there on patrol. Leola Conway, Ernestine Webb, William Conway, Melvin Conway, Thera Clay, Ronald Gray, the family of uh, Betty Hale, and the family of Mayvale Gray. All right, praying for Chief and Claire Dishman, praying for Knoxville, and Grace and her family there. Amen. We're lifting them up. Our old school, where I talk Austin East. Sister Keys, God bless you. Adam A. Calhoun, Keys Jenkins. Praying for you and your grandchildren always. And Brother Clyde. Oh, yeah. Who's on the Lord's side? Amen. That's Sister Canada to the list. She's not 100%, but she's here with us this evening. Pastor Paul Tavia. Paul Taylor, Knoxville. How you doing, Pastor Paul? Amen. We got to pick, pick a lift you up in prayer. Amen. Who's on the Lord's side? Amen. It's so good. We got to bag it up here some more. Let me turn that down a little bit so we can hear the prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, we thank and praise you from everlasting to everlasting that thou art God. With bowed head and humble heart, we come to the throne thanking you for life, for help, and for strength. So much to be thankful for. And we realize, Lord, that we just don't thank you enough. So this evening, before we ask you for anything, Lord God, we thank you for everything, for life, for help, and strength. Looking unto you as the author and the finisher of our faith. Come now with mercy. Come now with grace. Look at the prayer list, Lord. You know how long it is. We praying, Lord God, for our cities, our county. Praying special for Knoxville and the school system and the school shooting, Lord God, and the police department and the people in general, Lord God, and those in Minnesota. Lord, Lord God, so much hurt, so much pain, so much killing, so much violence. And then the pandemic, Lord God, come now with your mercy, Lord God. Have mercy on our soul. We pray, Lord God, for the churches, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you end this pandemic so we can get back into the building and, and shout all over God's heaven. Now bless us and keep us. Pray that all that we do and all that we say be pleasing in our sight. Give a word from on high for these, thy people. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and thank God. Get up. Get up. Get up. Go ahead, type get up in the in the comment box if you're on the Lord's side. Let me hear you type it. Just type get up. Get up. Get up. If you're on the large side, get up. All right, out of base, say, get up. Get up. Evangelist Kenner said, get up. Krista Dunn said, get up, get up. Kakesha, Kanisha Bond Jackson said, get up. Pee Wee said, get up. Grace said, get up. We all on the Lord's side. Paul Taylor's on the Lord's side. Pastor Taylor said, get up. Donna Don, good evening. Get up. Barbara Dye said, good evening. 
Get up. Hey, man. Hey, man. The Renner Clark Cole and Byron Cage. Get up if you're on the Lord's side. Hey, man. To God be the glory. Baba Dye, how you this evening? Hey, man. All right, we continue. Mother Thaddeus said, get up. All right, get up. Don't forget to share this message with your friends and with your family and with your network. Amen. Continuing. We continue with our, uh, our post resurrection Sunday series. All right. And this, this sermon, this actual time frame happens sometime. All right. We're going to look at Paul out on Aeropagus. He said, okay, doc, don't get, don't, don't get theo, the, theological with us. All right. Aeropagus is by uh, 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 a Roman name. Then you got Roman and Greek name. Okay. You probably knew it by his Greek name, Mars Hill. Okay, Paul out on Mars Hill, the arrow pagus. Okay, starting at Acts 17, where you will find this story recorded. And we'll start round about uh, verse 15. And they conducted Paul and brought him to Athens and received a commandment unto Silas and Timothy to come with all speed. They departed. Now, while Paul waited for them in Athens, his spirit was third in him. He saw the whole city, the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews, with the devout person, and in the market with them that met with him. Certain of the philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoic encountered him, and some said, What is this babbler say? Others some. He seemed to be a set of forth of strange God because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. They took him and brought him to Aeropagus, saying, May we know this new doctrine, whereof thou speak it. <clears throat> For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time doing nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hills and said, You men of Athens, I perceive in all things that you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotion, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom you therefore ignorantly worship, which I declare unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelling not in temples, made with hand. Neither worship with men hand as though he need anything seeing he's given to life, breath, and all things. Alright, we're going to skip down <clears throat> to that uh, 32nd verse. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, we will hear thee of this matter. So Paul departed from amongst them. Howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed, some among which was Dionysius and Aropagite and woman named Amaris and others with them. Amen. All right. From those last few verses, 32 and 33, what it recorded their reaction to Paul's preaching of the gospel want to preach from this topic this evening, just for a little while, the response to the resurrection or the response to the gospel. Mother Cat, how you doing? Karen, glad you can join with us there. The response to the resurrection. Here we have Paul. Well, arguably his most well-known and most important verse there. All right. Paul had been treated, had been threatened with his life in, in the 17th chapter as he went around the countryside strengthening church and preaching uh, to the churches that had been established there. And as usual, the devout Jews would, would band together and threaten his life and run him out of town. So Paul was on the run, literally on the run, for his life. And we find that in verse number 15, that they conducted him and brought him to Athens, to Athens, Greece. 
And then they sent for uh, uh, Silas and Timothy to come later. But they got him out of town quick, fast, and in a hurry. And then we find Paul later on preaching out on Mars Hill. My, my, my. So just going to look at the uh, uh, this verse, this story, the whole uh, 17th chapter of Acts, but concentrating on those verses starting at 15 to 34 to the end. All right. This sermon out on Mars Hill, Paul's most famous sermon. All right. And what was the reason for this sermon, the requirement for this sermon, the need for this sermon? All right. And we, and we find out that the need for this sermon is outlined in those 16 and, and 17 verses. When he got to Anthony, his spirit was troubled. His spirit was stirred. Yeah, all right. He saw the whole city, the entire city, was filled with idols and given to idolatry. My, my, my. Think about that. The whole city given to idolatry, worshiping false gods and had idols all over the place. All right. So that was the reason for the sermon. America's in the same boat as Anthony. <clears throat> all right. S -s Seems like the whole country and certain, certain, Cities are giving hold to idolatry. And I've been in a few cities in my day, and I found that some of them are giving hold holy to idolatry. All right, San Francisco seems to be giving holy to homosexual. Certain city giving holy to murder, the murder capital. All right, so in this we find this whole country, of America, given to hate, <clears throat> given to violence given to killing folks, especially African-American, Negro, colored, black folks, and other minority, attacking on Asian and other minority, uh, Hispanic, all right? So the reason for this sermon is it, it, just the same as it was in Athens and Paul days. The entire city, in this case America, the entire country almost seemed to be given to violence, given to hatred, given over to idleness. So that was the reason for the sermon. All right, well, who were the recipients? All right, who did Paul preach to? Who were the audience? And we look at that verse 18, all right, and we find out who the audience was. All right. <clears throat> and then, then certain of the philosophers, the Greek philosophers, the Epicurean and the Stoic in, encountered him. All right, so they had two major fields of philosophy in Athens, in, in Greek. One was the Epicureans, and the other were Stoic. The Epicureans, you may not recognize them as a group of philosophers, as a branch of philosophy, but you will recognize their, their belief, all right? Their belief was, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you may die. Their whole purpose Reason for living was the pursuit of pleasure and the pursuit of happiness. Well, we can remember our younger days, and some of you need to go somewhere and sit down as you got old and still trying to have your player card. We live for the party. Part over here, part over there. Ooh, ooh. We live for the party. And, and many, many of us might have been uh, 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 practicing the Epicurean philosophy, party, party, party. And when you get through partying, party again. Eat, drink, and be merry. The pursuit of happiness. The pursuit of pleasure. All right. Now, the other group of philosophers were the Stoics. All right. And they were to be avoid, devoid of all emotion. All right. You've seen them in trait. The pastor preaching, preaching his or her heart out. The spirit is high. And they just sitting there like God has not blessed them. Won't clap their hand, won't say amen, won't thunk their feet, won't do anything. All right. Now, if, if, if you want to know the classic story, if you watch Star Trek, like I uh, might be a tracker, Mr. Spark, the classic story, devoid of all emotion. But if God has blessed you, if God 
had laid his hand on you, if God had lifted you, lift you up out of the muck and the miry clay, if God have gave you that job when you didn't qualify, when God have got you that car or got you that house, when you know your credit was shot and all jacked up, then you ought to praise his holy and righteous name. The script, the psalm that said, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And, and there was some, one too fond of, 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 of Paul and that they had some name for him. In, in, in verse 18, the uh, identity that they look at him, all right, when they encounter him, they said, what would this babbler say? They called him a babbler, talking incoherent. Uh, in other words, didn't know what he was talking about, all right? Then other, <coughs> the insult, his identity, they called him a babbler. The insult they heard at him, all right? He's a set of forth of strange God, my my, my. All right. But in all of this, the, the insult they heard at him, uh, 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 the identity they call in the battle, and the idleness. Yes. Seemed like the Anthony, Anthony was the place to go. Those that wanted to learn something went there to learn. And those that had something they wanted to teach went there to teach. So the whole city of Anthony was given over to learning and hearing something new. All right, some of us like that just want to hear something new. The spread of the gossip, not the gospel. Living for what's new. Get on the telephone. Tell it on this brother. Tell it on that sister. All right, what you need to be telling you won't tell. That God is good all the time and all the time God is good. But in spite of all of this, they invited Paul. So, regardless of the identity, they called him a babbler. They know what he's talking about. Insulted him, talking about strange God in the island, and doing nothing else but trying to learn it later. They gave him an invitation to come to Aeropagus, to come to Mars Hill, because they wanted to hear Sister Vanna what was going on. Dot done, God bless you. All right, so they invited Paul to Mars Hill. <laughs> and finally, when the day, when the time came, he started reading his sermon starting at 22nd break. Well, Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill. And Paul shared two things, some observation and revelation. Paul shared in his observation that I, I perceived that in all things you're too superstitious. Translation, that means you're too religious. Now, religion is the worship of someone or uh, 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 something, all right? So they were superstitious about their religion. They worship any and everything. They had a God for everything there is. The God of war, the God of sunshine, the God of water, the God of earth, the God of crops. They had a God just about for everything. So they worship any and everything. But Paul got a divine revelation from on high. Yeah, I saw you devoted. Uh, 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 you worship. You had an altar. You had an a, 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 a idol. You had a statue to every God there was. And then you had one just in case you forgot one, to the unknown God. And Paul said, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God who you worship, but you worship ignorantly. And I'm here today out on Mars Hill to declare him unto you. Now, Paul gave the review of the city. And then Paul proceeded with his remarkable service. Let's see how they responded to the resurrection. Let's see how they responded to the gospel. Paul told them about their past, about the past. Yeah, he told them to the Hebrew in verse 24 to 26 that God 
was the maker of everything. Come here, John, and witness for, for this. John 1 and 1 said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Yeah, God was the maker of anything. Come here, Moses, and witness out of Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was void without form. Darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved over the face of the water. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Well, he told them that was the Hebrew rendition. All right, then they told them about their own rendition in 28, 29. He said, your own port said we are God's offspring. That was the past. And then he told them about the present, about God's desire to save people. And his desire is that none should perish. You see that? Starting at 27 break. Well, God desire that none should perish. Yeah, he give us vision and he give us sight to see so we won't get lost and we should not perish. Yeah, he, he told them about the past that he made everything, told them about the present, his desire to save the world, and he told them about prediction for the future, that God, in that 31st verse, someday God is going to judge the world through the risen Jesus Christ. He is not dead, for he is still alive. Yeah, he told them in that 31st verse, that there was a time at ignorance God winked, but now commanded every man everywhere to repent. Yeah, we heard this scripture that God winked at our sin. God winked at our ignorance. God never winked at our sin, but he winked at our ignorance. What this means is that he overlooked it Pastor Carwell, God bless you. Yeah, God winked at our ignorance. We were unaware. We didn't know what we're doing. Was it a Jesus from the cross that said, Father, forgive them, but they don't know what they're doing. He winked at our ignorance. But right now, he's calling men and women to repent. Paul preaching out on Mars Hill when I told them, about Jesus, about the past, how he come down to 40 and two generation, told them how he saved, <coughs> saved folk, how he made the lame to walk, and he made the dumb to talk. Paul told them about the gospel, how they marched him up a hill called Calvary, and he never said a mumbling word. He told them how the sin got heavy on that old rugged cross and how he dropped down on his knees. But he never said a mumbling word. The songwriter said, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all this world go free. There's a cross for everyone. There's a cross for me. You got to bear your cross. I got to bear my cross. No cross, no crown. Jesus bore his cross up the hill, Barbara, to uh, up the hill called Calvary to the place of the skull. God got the, where they nailed him to the cross and they hung him high and they stretched him wide at no, but they forgot he said, if I be lifted up, I draw all men uh, unto me. If I be lifted up, if I be crucified, I draw prostitutes unto me. I draw dope slingers and gun bangers and game bangers uh, unto me. I draw all men 
are under me, and they pierced them in the side, and the blood came streaming down, healing blood, saving blood, redeemed men blood, and he gave up the goat at the hung his head, and the lock of the shoulder, he died, took him down, put him in a grave, but I'm here to tell you, the grave couldn't hold him. He stayed in the grave all night Friday. Stayed right there all day Saturday. All night Saturday. But early, early Sunday morning, early the third day, he got up with all power. Brother McCray, God bless you. <coughs> he got up with all power in his hand. And when they heard about the resurrection of the dead. Let's look at their response. Their response started in verse 32 when they said some derived him. They mocked him. They ridiculed him. They talked about him. Yeah, they called him everything but a child of God. When he talked about God raised him from the dead. Yeah, the first response, they derived him. The second response, they delayed. Some said, we were here again of this manner. They delayed. They put it off. I'm here to tell you, you can't delay. You can't delay. While blood yet run warm in your vein, you need to come under God. All we have is right now. Tomorrow is not promised us. We used to say here today, gone tomorrow. But right here, this day, folks are leaving so fast. They are here today and they are gone today. Tomorrow, not promised us. So don't delay. But I'm here to tell you, not all derail, not all mock, not all delay, not all put it off. But verse 34 said, some men and certain women, they clave unto him. They were devoted to the gospel, the death, the burial, and resurrection of Christ. Are you devoted to the gospel? Well, I'm here to tell you, when Paul preached this sermon out on Areopagus, when Paul preached out on Mars Hill, they had this response. They derailed our Lord. They derailed our Savior. They delayed their acceptance, but some were devoted to him. Well, I'm here to tell you that the same response to the gospel that we have right now. Yeah, we talk about him. Folks that don't know that Jesus is Lord talk about you as sure as you're born. Yeah, they call you name. Talk about your faith. Yeah, but some hear the word and they delay. Say, I'm coming, but not right now. I got some more partying to do. I got some more living to do. But I'm here to tell you, you're making plans to live. You better get ready to die. Because this is not our home. One day, we got to leave this world. You see, there's a leak in this old building. My soul have got to move. I got to move to a bland new place. Heaven is my home. Heaven is my goal each and every day. And when we get through doing down here, when we get through bearing our burden, in the heat of the day, when we get through coming up the rough side of the mountain, my response is I'm going home to be with the Lord. Well, every day we're going to be like Sunday and the Sabbath will have no end. We're going to praise his name throughout all eternity. Well, what's your response? I'm here to tell you my response. There was a time that I mocked. I didn't believe. I made fun. I didn't care. I ridiculed. And then there was a time when I delayed. I put it off. But we don't know where death is, Pastor Hudson and First Lady. 
But one day, God reached down into a cesspool of life. He reached down into the muck and the miry clay, and he picked me up, and he turned me around, and he placed my feet on solid ground. Yeah, there was a time when we sang rock and roll. Now, standing on the rock, got my name on his roll. And um, my response to the gospel, my response to the resurrection is to praise his name. My response is to believe in my heart and to confess with my mouth that God raised him from the dead. And thereby, he is my God and I'm his child. What's your response? Will you ridicule? Will you delay? Or will you be devoted? Are you devoted to the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you devoted to him? The one that died for you out on Calvary. The one that calls you by name. What's your response? Praise is what I do. Yes, Tasha Carr. He knows your name. Tasha Carr. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Praise his God. He knows my name. Will you derive? Yes, brother. We are worthy of the land. Will you derive? Talk about a mock. Will you delay? Put it off. Or will you be devoted to him? He knows your name. He knows who you are. He knows where you are. He knows my name. He knows your name. And oh, how he walks with me. Amen. Do he know your name? How he talks with me. Sister Bob says she devoted to him always. Yeah. Dot done. She's so glad he knows his name. Man, I said, yes, he does. He's all right. He knows your name. Pee Wee said he knows your name. Amen. Oh, yeah. He knows your name. Brother George, he knows your name. He knows your name. Comfort you, Michelle. He knows your name. Pee Wee, Evelyn. He knows your name. Pastor Taylor, Pastor Carwell, Pastor Hudson. He knows your name. Thank you, Lord. He knows your name. Oh yeah. Hey, Amen. Mother Cat. He knows your name. What's your response to the gospel? How do you react to preaching? The word is going forth. All these pastor, Pastor Carwell, Pastor Taylor, Pastor Hudson, Prophet is done, Evangelist Canada, all these delivering the word. What's your response when you hear the word of God? The same response they had to Paul preaching about the resurrection. They derived mean they mock, talk about ridicule. Two, they delayed, put it off. We'll hear about that later. But some heard and they were devoted to him. I wasn't devoted at first, but now, but now, warn to me about preaching about the gospel. He knows my name. He knows your name. He know my name. You know my name, Lord God. Over six billion people in the world, you know my name. Amen. How 
somebody to walk with me. Amen. Tasha Cobb letter. He knows my name. Amen. God bless you, God. Keep you as our prayers for you. Amen. Amen. Let's look at the announcement before we proceed to dismiss with prayer. Pastors, thank y'all so much for tuning in. It mean a lot. I try to catch y'all serving y'all teaching when I can. Amen. All right. We got clean up. All right. <clears throat> Praying for Edna and her broken heart. Amen. Clean up. Robsonville clean up. Actually, they got clean up all over the county. That's only 24. But, all right. Uh, a Robsonville clean up uh, start uh, Sunday the 18 at 1. Meeting at the Hambrook Day Claire Care. All right. Brother McClay, thank you. Thank you. The next time in the Huntsville, I looked you up. Brother McCray, old section chief and freight sergeant in the army. Amen. All right. Romsonville clean up Sunday, April 18th at 1 p.m. This coming Sunday, going to meet at the daycare center there as soon as you get into Hambro. Amen. All right. COVID vaccine. Okay. Now, they having pop up the, the uh, 19, 20, and 21st at the President Building, Building Economic there. Well, you can just show up, pop up, or you can call, sign up, or just show up, all right, and get vaccinated. All right, man, I, I understand you're resistant to a COVID, uh, a vaccination, and I understand. Believe me, I understand. As you treat it, as, as one of the pastors said, like Jesus. Jesus don't force himself on nobody, all right? But if you allow him to, he will save you, all right? So the choice is yours. We can't make you take the vaccine, but the choice is yours. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer for you. Amen. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir, for worshiping with us tonight. We ask that you share this message with your friend. We share this message with your family. And we share this message with your network. Edna, we're praying for you, all right, because we know what's going on, but we're praying that everything be all right. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Praying for Clive, whatever the situation, we'll find out about that uh, later. Please, Saint, get get vaccinated there. Amen. You don't want to be a stumbling block. You don't want to make anyone ill or, 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 or sick or cause them to suffer or die. Amen. So please, ma'am, please, sir, get vaccinated. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you Sunday at around the 11 o'clock hour with another exciting message from on high. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keeps you. Is our prayer for you. To God be the glory. All right. Let us go out with Tasha. Carl Leonard knows my name. Amen. Father God, we thank and praise you for life, for health and strength. We thank you for the ears that seen. We thank you for eyes, what ears have heard. We thank you for the eyes that seen. But most we thank you for our heart felt as you open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing. Now, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide each of now, henceforth, and forevermore. People of God said amen. Amen. Amen, amen. To God be the glory. Don't forget, share that with your friend, with your family, and with your network. God bless you.